Hi, welcome to the next session. And in this session, we want to start with some practice questions in relation to the discussions that we did when it comes to initial recognition and subsequent measurement in relation to IAS 16, property, plant, and equipment. So we're going to go through two very simple questions to help us to understand the introductory issues. Then from there, we're going to be taking some serious questions later on in the discussion and see how the standard actually applies to various specific scenarios. So the first question we want to look at, okay, so the requirement for this question is pretty simple. It says that in accordance with IAS 16 property plants and equipment, Calculate the amount that should be capitalized as property in the financial statement for the year ended 31st December 2016. So let's see what we have. The following costs were incurred in 2016 in the design and construction of a new office building for a nine-month period during 2016. So we're going to be bringing up our answer slide and then look at the various things that has to be brought we're working three zeros up so remember the principle we discussed we said that the initial cost of the asset shall be the purchases cost and all other directly attributable costs incurred in bringing the asset to its present use if the asset was built in-house or was manufactured or constructed then there are other issues uh, in relation to the cost that we incur in bringing the asset to its present use. These are the things that must be included in the initial cost of the asset. So just with that same principle, that is what we're going to be applying here. Feasibility study. Is that a cost that relates to bringing the building to its present use? Feasibility study. No, in accordance with IAS 16, feasibility study, it's like a historical cost. Feasibility study is like a research that is carried, a study that is carried out by the entity to determine whether the office building can ev even be constructed there or whether it is material for them to do it there in that case. So this is not a cost that must be included in the initial cost of the asset. If anything, it should be written off in the profit or loss account. So we have to take that 8 million to the profit or loss account. So feasibility study, it's going to be dash or nil. So even though this is not required because we are having a discussion, I'm going to make an extract of the statement of financial position, statement of profit or loss. So the feasibility study is going to come as an expense in the profit or loss, and it's an amount of eight. So we write it off in the profit or loss account. It cannot be included in the initial cost of the asset. Next, architect's fee. Remember we said professional fees must be included without the architect design buildings are constructed twice one on paper by the architect and then the other by you know the builders themselves at the end of the day so the architect fee is a cost that will be incurred is a directly attributable cost so architect's fee so that must be included in the initial cost next site clearance by external demolition professionals site clearance you want to build right so clearing the site is very important so that must be included in the initial cost of the assets that's 80,000 Ghana cities it must be included next construction material 600 so construction materials that's obvious you don't need a miracle for that so we bring it up 600 next one is going to be Cost of own inventory used in the construction. Cost of own inventory used. Let's see. They said 30. But stay with me. It says the net realizable value if sold outside the company is 24,000. Now, so even though you're in IAS 16, IAS 2 inventory is coming to town and you have to talk about it. And we'll talk about inventory in the next video. But Inventory should be carried at lower of cost and net realizable value. So if you look at it here, the cost of own inventory used, if you look at the cost, the cost is 30. But we are told that the net realizable value, if sold outside, the company is 24. So which one is lower? The 24. So the 24 becomes the cost of the inventory that we're going to be using here and like i said in the beginning that is the beauty of the standards so it's not like oh i'm doing ias 16 so that's all about ias 16. there are connected 
the standards are interconnected and it is important you understand them across board. But we'll talk in detail later on and, uh, and explain IAS2 inventories. But that is how we value this inventory that the entity used to manufacture or construct the building. Next, internal construction st staff salary during the period of construction, and that is 360. That must be included, internal construction staff salary, that is 360, <coughs> because the entity used some of its own employees and they work on the construction of the building. And so since the activities are attribute directly attributable to the construction of the building, then the salary we pay them must be included in the initial cost of the building. And that is in accordance with IAS 19 employee benefits because wages and salary paid to employees is a short-term benefit and that is under IAS 19 and must be included in the initial cost of the asset and not written off in the profit or loss account. Next, external construction cost. That must be brought, external contractors cost. That is 2,400. Then income from renting out part of site as storage depot during early phase of construction. That is 12. That sh cannot be netted off against the initial cost. Instead, it should be treated as income in the profit or loss. That's very important. So you realize that in explaining the principle, not everything can be captured. But as we solve the question, as we expose ourselves to questions, a lot of the principles will be expanded and we will get better understanding when it comes to dealing with the standards. And that is an amount of dash because, like we said, it should be recognized in the PL account. In accordance with IAS 16, paragraph 2, income generated as the asset is still under construction should not be netted off against the initial cost of the asset. Instead, it must be recognized as other income in the PL account. So the other income will be 12, and that will be recognized in the PL. So in the question, you saw it that it was deducted. In arriving at this figure but we are not interested in that so let's add this up and see what we got and that is three five six four so this is the amounts that will be recognized on the face of the statement of financial position as property plant and equipment in accordance with the question now the asset was completed by the end of 2016 so certainly no depreciation will be charged because it's just at the end of the year that they completed so we will not think about any depreciation if we are not also giving any information about how depreciation should be charged in respect of this question, so we just leave it there, and that is all. Then in the PNL account for that year ended 31st December 2016, the feasibility study will be written off, and then under other income, the amount we got from renting out the space will be included in the statement of profit or loss. All right, so that is the first illustrative question that we want to look at.